All right, for the next talk, we have Julian talking to us about portable software build materials. Let's welcome Julian. Come on. Hello, everyone. So uh, today I will be talking about, uh, my talk is, is called Portable Software Bill of Material with Nix and Systemd Portable Services. But it's actually just a, a good excuse to talk to you about stuff I find interesting and ID I find interesting. So um, basically I'm a 27 years old PhD student in uh, Paris, at Telecom Paris or um, Institut Polytechnique de Paris. I'm a Nix OS developer as well. Um, where I work mostly on the uh, implementation on, of system debut in NixOS. And uh, I'm a, so I'm a PhD student, I'm a, and my main research work is about uh, the impact of uh, functional package managers on the trustworthiness of the software supply chain. So I'm going to explain a bit what is all this, and how does it uh, have... Uh, uh, what is the link with portable uh, systemd services? So this, what I'm present, with what I'm presenting today, is not my research work. It's just a side side idea that I wanted to share. Um, first of all, let's talk about what is uh, software supply chain and software supply chain security. So basically, the software supply chain is uh, all the components, tools, and processes that are used to produce, compile, and distribute software. So. Basically, what, all what happens from the source code to an executable present and installed on your machine. And um, there are many places in the software supply chain that you can uh, attack and that hence you need to secure. Uh, so all the things about uh, contribution um, to create the, the software, so basically all, all, all the things about the code all the things about the build process, compilation process, and then all the things about the uh, distribution process. And um, there are a lot of, uh, there, are, there were lately big uh, software supply chain attacks. So for example, the, you probably heard about the XZ attack. It happened more like at the source point. Like there was a, an evil contributor that, that added evil code. Uh, but there is another one that is interesting, is uh, maybe you've also heard about, is the SolarWind attack. Uh, SolarWind is a big uh, company that produces a software called Orion, and this software uh, was also, the, soft, the supply chain of this software was also attacked. And uh, at this, this, uh, this occasion, it was more like the build process. The attackers were able to, um, to add uh, a backdoor during the compilation process, and then the, the software was signed. Uh, and distributed by uh, by SolarWinds to its uh, to its customer, including the U.S. government, and that, so that created a, a lot of uh, fuss around it, and and the movement to create security norms uh, in the software supply chain. So in the U.S., they have the executive order on improving the nation's cybersecurity. In the EU, we have the Cyber Resilience Act. But they, they are both like project to to ensure we have more transparency and auditability of the software. Uh, one is relying upon. Um, and the big hot topic in this field is software bill of materials. The idea of software bill of materials is that you, is the same of bill of materials for a normal supply chain. So basically some document that uh, lists all the components that goes into your software so that you can audit it and see if you trust all these components. For software you can have the same thing and you can have, you can have a document that lists all the dependencies uh, and third-party components that there is in your project. And you can add uh, all, uh, all the metadata that you want to these, to these uh, documents. So for example, you can add the licenses of these, uh, these components, so you can know exactly what are the licenses of all the uh, dependencies you rely on, and you can add uh, um, very precise uh, uh, information about the source of each, uh, each uh, uh, of the component, the, the patch, the patches that are applied, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There, there are several um, standards for this uh, software bill of materials, but they all amount about to that. The problem with uh, software of uh, software bill of materials is that they are not that easy to to generate. Um, realistically, you can you really add to generate them when you're building the software, because it's at the, when you're building the software that you know 
uh, exactly what uh, dependency you used to build it, what patch you applied, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, if if you download an executable from the internet and you don't have the SBOM, you, there is no really, really there is not really a way to reconstitute it afterwards because you don't know exactly in which condition this executable was built. Uh, in which environment, with which dependencies, etc., etc. So the point is, uh, if you if if it's not provided to you and you're not the one building the software, uh, it's complicated to obtain it. And there are um, uh, a few ecosystems in which uh, it's, it's super easy to get uh, some kind of software bill of material uh, out of uh, the tooling. For example, the Rust. Uh, ecosystem as uh, as the good uh, tooling to embed into the final uh, executable the list of dependencies it were that were used to to build the, the software. But in some ecosystem, it's more complicated, and uh, and you're kind of stuck. You, you there is n not really a way around it. Um, so that was the first component of my talk. Now I'm going to talk about the, the other article, the articulation with functional package managers. So you, you've heard uh, about Nix several times today, but I'm going to re-go this, this way, sorry. <laughs> um, so Nix or Geeks, or what I call function package managers, are uh, a software pa packaging model or deployment model um, that is based on a functional uh, programming language. That's where, where uh, functional uh, package manager comes from. And in this model, uh, packages are, are described or expressed as a pure function, so it really comes from the uh, functional programming language community as a pure function from dependencies, so build time and runtime dependencies, to some representation of a build recipe uh, that can be executed to compile uh, the software. So, so software are compiled from source and their, their recipe are, are described as a pure function in that language. So in this example, you see at the top that's the uh, expression for the nano package, and at the top you have the three parameters of, of the function, stdum, fetch URL, and end curses. stdum is like the standard environment to build stuff in Nix. Fetch URL is a function that will download the source of uh, the nano package, and end curses is, is, a, is a runtime dependency for nano. And then you have an expression, and without entering too much in the detail, in this expression we have the SRC uh, field that will download a very precise version of the source of Nano, and then uh, there you have a, a recipe that will, from this source, uh, build the, the executable from Nano, and you can provide uh, flags to pass at some point of the recipe, or uh, even you could add uh, specific steps that you want to happen during the compilation, etc. And you have a meta field that contains metadata about the package, including uh, the maintainers of the, this package in the Nix package repository, the license of this, uh, of this package, the platform it's compatible with, etc. Et so the benefits of, of, of this, of functional package manager for, for uh, dependency tracking, you might imagine it, is because functions, uh, packages are pure functions from, from their input, uh, when you take a package, you can go from dependency to dependency and compute the, the whole static graph of all the uh, uh, build time or runtime dependency of a package. And here, if I, if I uh, uh, take a very s uh, simple example, I run a, a command that give, gave me the graph of uh, runtime dependency of Nano, and that was uh, completely for free. Uh, uh, Nix did a very little computation to do, to do that. And so um, um, from this, you can imagine that it's super easy to compute this, uh, this software bill of materials that uh, uh, we really want for software supply chain security. So in the, in the Nix ecosystem, we have uh, several projects that uh, uh, just have this role of taking, um, taking a package or a Nix expression and outputting uh, Cyclone DX, uh, so one of the standards for, for uh, uh, software view of material, document uh, for this package. So there is a one that is called Bonbon that is done by uh, Niklas that talked uh, before, and another one that is called uh, Genealogos. So at this point of the talk, you might ask yourself, yes, okay, I understand, you can have uh, S-bombs for free in Nix, but I don't do Nix and I don't care. 
uh, and I would understand you. I'm not here to sell Unix. I'm just telling you, um, at some point, I realized we have, we have something that is difficult to obtain in some other ecosystem for free in, in our ecosystem. And Nix package, the Nix package repository, is a very big set of expression uh, that describe more than 80,000 packages. So it's like a, a very big public good of free SBOMs for a, a lot of package, uh, that's a lot of software that exists in the wild. So is this only something good for, for people that do, do Nix, or this thing can be translated or, and used for people that don't care about Nix, but still care about software supply chain security and, and software bill of materials? So I, I ask my, my, uh, myself the question, are software bill of materials portable? Which is basically, can I take a software bill of material that I generated with Nix and give it to someone that uses uh, Debian? And is this person supposed to be interested in this document? And the answer is not really, because uh, uh, the package uh, that, runs, uh, that, that I built with Nix and the package that was built and distributed in the Debian distribution are not the same. If, uh, if you use HTOP uh, on Nix and HTOP on Debian, they, are, they, they do the same thing, but they were not built in, under the same condition. Maybe they don't have the same patches applied, they don't have the same version of dependencies, etc. So my SBOM is, is, is not really of any use for a Debian user. And, and this de de the dependencies in the SBOM can be super relevant. Uh, if you remember, if you heard about the XZ backdoor, um, this, this backdoor that was recently inserted in the source code of XZ was targeting actually the SSH package and w could only target it if um, SSH was, uh, uh, was linked against libsystemd, who itself was linked against uh, libelzma, uh, which was uh, in XZ. So, Knowing exactly, and this was only in distribution that, that applied a certain patch to change SSH. So knowing exactly the subtlety of how your package has been built is super important for security. So I, I, I was a bit burned by the fact that uh, my SBOMs are not really portable and, and I can't do anything with these uh, 80,000 uh, uh, packages that I can generate SBOM for free for. But then I discovered about uh, portable system D services. And basically, a portable system D service is, uh, is a system D service that comes with some image uh, that contain resources, uh, like uh, executable files, a unit file, uh, and uh, could be other resources embedded in the image that can be used by, uh, by the service. Also comes with uh, some sandboxing uh, that is uh, uh, more, uh, more strict than um, what uh, what like the typical uh, system D service uh, comes from, like stricter than the default. So what can I do with all these this pieces? Well, with Nix, we have tooling uh, to, uh, to generate portable system D services easily uh, that has been introduced by uh, J. Damjan, where basically you, uh, you, you describe a unit file and you give it to the function portable service and Nix will compute uh, the, run, uh, the runtime closure of this unit file and put everything uh, needed in the Im image automatically and, and spit out an image. So for example here, we have a unit file. Yeah. And this unit file, there is a piece of code, uh, of Nix code that says uh, uh, that the exec start is going to just uh, run the hello binary from Nix and then Nix is going to compute the runtime binary of the hello package and put everything in the image and give it to me. And so the idea is from this, what we can do is we can, uh, we can uh, generate uh, a portable uh, service image with Nix, alongside with a uh, software bill of material, also computed uh, with Nix tooling, and then use it on another distribution. So for example, let's say I am interested in the software Uptime Kuma, which is a service uh, a status page, and I want to deploy this on a Ubuntu server that doesn't have Nix. What I can do is, let's say I want to do that, and I need also that there is, I have a software bill of material for this service because I'm uh, there, I have strict constraints of security uh, on this service and I want to analyze all the dependencies and everything. It's like, it's in the context of tight security, so I need this. 
So uh, I go on the GitHub page of this project and I see that basically the only mean of distribution of this, uh, this uh, software is through a Docker image. Or you run it from, from source, but uh, you just do everything yourself. So Docker image is not really good for my intent because the Docker image has been built. Yes? Oh, sorry. The Docker image has been built by, uh, by the maintainer of this project, and so there is already a lot of pre-compiled artifacts in this Docker image, and I can't, do, I can't generate a software bill of material uh, from this, from the, from the pre-compiled artifact, I, don't, I can't do anything. So that's not good to, to me, but I know that uh, uptime kuma is in uh, its package in Nix, so what I do is I write a Nix expression that will generate a portable uh, service for uh, uptime kuma, so the same manner uh, as with the example uh, with hello, I just write a unit file for this and I let Nix give me a portable uh, systemd image for this. And um, what I do furthermore is that I use the bonbon library to generate me uh, a software bill of material for, for this image and I put all this into the, same, uh, into the same artifact. So I have an artifact that has linked uh, the image and its software bill of material. And then I, I can deploy it on, uh, on my, uh, my server. So I, I show you a quick demo. I don't know how I should do this. Okay. So this is my Ubuntu server. Uh, you can see that it's running uh, old version of Ubuntu. It's not running Nix. I don't have anything Nix related on this. I can uh, build my, uh, my uh, uptime Kuma portable uh, image with Nix. I just uh, will transfer it to the, to the machine. OK. Then I SSH into the machine. Uh, the image is there. Then I use the portable CTL executable to, load, to attach the image to the, to the system. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so it created, uh, it found the, the unit file inside the image, it loaded the image uh, correctly, and now I can just do, like usual, systemctl uh, start uptaikuma.service, and it will, uh, it will work. Here we go. Um, if I go to the status, you can see that uh, it worked, uh, it launched the service. Uh, and um, I, we can see, I think, uh, we, yes, I will just see that uh, this, the service is actually responding. Here we go. So uh, Untype Kuma is on port 3001, so it, it answered to me, so everything is working correctly. And uh, you can also see that in the same folder, there is a full software bill of material for this, uh, this uh, executable. So that's basically the idea of, I have taken a software bill of material that, that was generated for free thanks to Nix, and I've used it on a machine that knows nothing about Nix. Thank you very much. Questions? You're perfectly on time. I have a question. You used the trusted profile there, but you also talked about sandboxing. Yes. <laughs> That's maybe a skill issue. Uh, uh, oh, do like, you want to say what that means to the audience? Yeah, so trusted profile is basically the lowest uh, level of sandboxing that, uh, that portable systemd services use. And I needed that uh, because Uptime Kuma uh, wants to write in varlib uh, Uptime Kuma, and I wasn't, it wasn't working without the trusted profile. Maybe you have the State answer to directory this. equal whatever, whatever. That's what I tried, but... Uh, it didn't work. I, I don't know. 
at some point I gave up and I, I yeah, put it no, a trusted fine. profile. <laughs> Just a curiosity because I noticed that. But yes, I, I tried to fix the shell completion. I, I saw you struggle to. <laughs> I've done the same million of times uh, to get the image there. Any other questions? Hopefully not for me. Then I ask another question. Um, was that um, image you built the Verity protected? Uh, no. Ah. Uh, maybe does, that's can future Nix work. Can do that? Yes. Okay. okay. But may, it's, I think it's future work. <laughs> but I will talk about the. I will talk about this with the person uh, that's uh, excellent. Develop this in Nix. It's a good idea. Any questions, comments? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>